So uh, I'm Raichu, uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about Haskell types and something that's called hole-driven development. So if the title reminds you of an old, uh, actually, nursery rhyme, this is intended, because in this talk I'm going to assume the role of Henry, who's going to ask Liza a lot of stupid questions about how to fix his program. Um, and Liza, which is my GHC uh, compiler and lots of other tools, are probably going to help me to get to the solution eventually. So first of all, why Haskell? Um, why this weird academic programming language? And it's actually a programming language that I use at work. Um, and we've got a lot of cool stuff going on. We've got the Soul framework, which is a very cool um, web framework to develop applications in. Uh, it's a lot of fun to work with that. We've got LVM, which is unikernel systems, something like Hannah's talked about, but we're not using OCaml, we're using Haskell for that. And we can compile to JavaScript, so no more need to write JavaScript. You can add all the cool stuff with types. Types, you say? Types. Types are limiting. <laughs> Ty types frustrate me. I mean, look at Java. It's, it's, it, uh, and I simpl uh, it simplifies with you if you think, oh, Java, Java's limiting me. Um, it actually is, because the type system is very limiting. You don't have a lot of power of expression. You have to annotate all your types explicitly. You have string, 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 string everywhere. It, this is boring. But if you work with Haskell, it's more like Legos. Legos, Legos is fun. I mean, everyone loves Legos, except those people who play with Playmobil, but I can't help you with that. Um, so, Legos are cool. And you've got a lot of different parts and can put them together and everything fits magically. And this is how working with types actually feels for me. And I hope I can convey this kind of feeling to you. So, let's think about type signatures for a little bit. What does a type signature tell us? So, what's in the name? So, we've got a function which is called f, and it just has the uh, following type. It takes an integer, takes a boolean, and gives me a type. So this type signature has some information. It tells me how many possible implementations can this function have. Um, and in this case, that's quite a lot. So maybe you were asking too much in our type signature at the moment. Maybe, maybe we just want to take one of the arguments and return that. So we want to have something that is a little bit simpler. So. Um, by making the type signature more general, we restrict the possibilities of possible functions that we can write that set of, satisfy this sort of type signature. So um, this function actually just has one implementation. And yeah, let me show you how we're going to implement this. And, and I'm going to use a feature of Haskell which is called um, type holds. So I can have this type signature function A. Can I? Yeah, you can. I love, I love running around on stage, so yeah. sorry to the people on the internet. Yeah, uh, uh, would you like to take this microphone? So can... Mic check, mic check. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so this will make it a little bit harder to type, uh, so please excuse me. Um, so here we've got a function, we've got the type signature again, and let's use this nice little feature called, this is really hard to type, um, so I'm going to put in a type hole in here. Can somebody please? <laughs> You're awesome, thanks, Hannes. <laughs> I owe you. So now we've got this uh, this this function, and we've got a type hole. And just load the demo, please. So this is a type error that I actually. Uh, produced on purpose. So it's telling me there's a hole in my program, dear Lila, dear Lila. Um, so it has the following type. It wants these things to produce that. So let's just introduce them. Uh, it's a little bit ridiculous, I'm sorry. So let's introduce X and Y. And let's have some more information here. And now I know my type, has, my hole has type A. And I've got information in my context that I can use. These are the Legos I can put in here. And as you can see, there is a Y of type B, there is a X of type, X of type A. And obviously, not with general recursion, we are just disregarding recursion at the moment. There's this one thing that fixes, that, 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 is, that is okay here. Um, it's X, so I can put an X in there. Oh, thank you. 
So, now we build that program by refinement, and we're happy. So, this gets, gets even more interesting, um, because the type signature tells us so much, I can use a program that is called Jin, and I can actually ask Jin, hey, do you know a program that satisfies this kind of type signature? And it outputs exactly the same program that I just wrote. So yeah, what the heck? <laughs> <laughs> Magic! <laughs> so this is great. Um, yeah. So let's let's go up a layer of abstraction because I just introduced the function const, um, which is a pretty trivial function. So let's do something more. Um, complicated. It's not really complicated. I wanted to introduce the notion of a functor. Um, and a functor is basically when you map over a thing. So that's a little bit of a lie, but I'm going to be very general here. Uh, very, well, concrete. Um, let's think you have a list of A's. And you have a function from A to B. And we want to get a list of B's. So what we're basically going to do, we're going to take every element of the list, we're going to apply the function f, and what comes out is a, function, uh, is a list of Bs. So, um, yeah. I'm, I'm really sorry. This is <laughs> so let, let's do that. Let's, let's introduce that kind of function, uh, uh, that kind of class. We call that a functor, f. Let me just erase that. Oh, that's too much. Just erase that. And we want to introduce our function. We call that one fmap, which takes a function from A to B sum f of a and which returns me an f of b. So this is what I told you about. This, this is the general idea behind a functor. And now we don't want to map over lists, we want to map over a tree or a computation. So let's build just a tree. I do this all the time in talks, so if you've seen that before. So this is the implementation of a binary tier in Haskell. You maybe want to do this in C with like 50 lines of code, but I prefer to just do one. <laughs> so let's implement this kind of functor um, for a tree. So we want to have a function and apply it to every single element of the tree. And let's use type holes. So we've got f is my function and t is my tree. We leave a type hole in there, we reload. And I made a mistake because the functor exists, so I have to hide that. So this is just me telling there is no such thing as a functor. I want to redefine that. So, okay. Now we've got a typo. We want to have a tree of B, and we've, what we've got is a tree of A and a function from A to B. So, okay, let's introduce our stuff again. Uh, we've introduced it, now we want to do analysis on what kind of trees we can have. There are only two things that we can have. We can have a tip, which, is, which contains a value. And this is called pattern matching, so I'm deconstructing all the possibilities that are available here. So now the situation got a little bit clearer. Now we can see that we've got an x of a and a function from f, uh, function f from a to b, and we want, what we want to have is a tree of b. Because a functor is actually structure preserving. Um, boy, this is really weird. Um, we know we have a tip, and well, let's be, let's be. Yeah. So now we just want to have a b up there. We've got a function from a to b. We've got an a. We've won. Yay! Yay. Excitement. Yay. Functional programming. <laughs> Woo! Trees! So let's just do the same thing for... Well, I'll leave that as a homework exercise. <laughs> so, so there's another thing that we could do. Um, we could map over a computation. And we call, I'll call that one a reader. Um, and this is actually what some, of, some people wanna, might want to call dependency injection. Um, which is just a fancy name for I'm passing an argument. Object-oriented people are very creative with named. So, so now I want to define the notion of an applicative. Um, and the type signature will tell you probably what I'm going to do. 
let's call this function apply. So if I've got some f, some kind of container that contains a function and something inside of a container, I want to be able to apply inside of this container. So this could be list or tree or whatever, f substitute at will. So let's make an instance for that, applicative for my reader of some r, where, let's use type holes again, because it's so much fun to use them, and this talk is actually about them. Um, so yeah, now we've got a lot of information and I'm going to be really, really fast here. Um, so let's just do pattern matching. This should contain a function because the type signature tells me. Um, we've got some x in there. Let's call, oops. So yeah. Okay, now we see that we've got something that takes an a, uh, r and returns an a. We've got something that takes an r and returns our function from f to uh, a to b. So where do we get an a? So the end structure preserving, this is why I'm in inserting this thing. We want, our whole has to have the, the type r to b. So just by introducing, we can introduce r now by using an anonymous function, put in my typo in there. So it, the JavaScript people, people write function wherever I write backspace, I think, uh, backslash, which is, in my opinion, shorter. <laughs> Not only in my, but, <laughs> I mean seriously, come on. <laughs> Why do you have to write function all the time? So I'm going to cheat a little bit, so, oh, excuse me, so. Yeah, it's, 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 it, gets, it gets even better. So, yay, F1, type holds all the way. Um, so, I, I, I did a lot of work here, and actually, let's go back to this fancy little program that is called Jin, and introduce reader RA. And just uh, find out if there is a function, which we call apply, Makes a reader from A to B. Uh, should introduce R here, excuse me. A reader A and a reader B. Introduce R here, damn it. <laughs> Typing on stage. And it actually inferred the program that I just wrote. So I'm obsolete. This thing is smarter than me. It, it gets even worse. Um, so. Google is a search engine for types, and it searches by meaning, not by strings. So let's be a little bit weird here. Just type, just mess around everything. Yeah, and no, no let's call this one Y, because it's, why not? Why not? <laughs> uh, and it takes a Y to an X, and it gives me an X. And it actually, oh, I know this thing. That is applicative. And I can search for meaning because the type tells me exactly what the function is doing. And there's a lot more stuff going on here. This is just the tip of the iceberg. So if you have any questions about Haskell, if you want to learn that, I can give you a workshop. I will do one-on-one -on -one sessions if you want to. Uh, this stuff really excites me. It makes me love programming even more. This is the best thing since sliced bread. And I say thank you very much. <laughs> Thanks a lot for, uh, yeah. Zugabe! <laughs> <laughs>